Coming up on Let's Get to the Points. We're going to be talking about Southwest. This might be the ultimate BOGO coupon. Nicole, what's BOGO? Buy one, get one. My favorite. To earn the companion pass through flying, you need to fly 100 one-way flights per calendar year. But if you're not one of those people that travels that often, there is other ways to earn the companion pass. So we hear so much about the Southwest companion pass. But you know what? There are other airlines that also have their own version of a companion pass. Best Coast, Southwest, Best Companion Pass. <laughs> Doesn't have a great rhyme, but I think it makes sense though. <laughs> okay. And now, let's get to the point. She loves traveling luxuriously for a fraction of the cost. It's Serena. He embraces every travel experience and he proves adventure is found everywhere. It's Miguel. She teaches you and your family to travel on a budget while indulging in a little bit of occasional luxury. It's Nicole. And he loves using his points to fly some of the world's best airlines in first class. It's Mitch Shannon. Hi there. Thank you for joining us on Let's Get to the Points video audio podcast, where we bring you the very best in tips and tricks in the world of miles, points, and travel. I'm Mitch Shannon, and I am joined by my co-host who love traveling the world with their families using their credit card points and miles. First up, you'll always find her in boarding group A. It's Serena. Hi, everyone. Not only does his bags fly for free, he does too. It's Miguel. Yeah, what's up? We like to think of her as our love LUV co-host. It's Nicole. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? Please help us out. Click the subscribe button now below to our YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple Podcast, wherever you watch or listen. Also, don't forget, sign up for our weekly newsletter where we send you the latest in news in points and miles. Now, are you guys ready to do it? Let's get to the points. Okay, tonight, we're sure we're going to have a couple of peanut jokes, maybe middle seat jokes, other type of stuff. But if you've not guessed by now, we're going to be talking about Southwest and we're going to get very serious about the most coveted airline companion pass of them all, the almighty Southwest Airlines companion pass. This might be the ultimate BOGO coupon. Nicole, what's BOGO? Buy one, get one. My favorite. <laughs> okay, Nicole, I got a question for you. So back in our American Airlines episode, you had said that you had resorted to buying dog food to get all these American airline miles and status. <laughs> so I want to know what's different. What are you doing different with this Southwest companion pass? Are you buying cat food? <laughs> yes, I am. Whatever it takes by any means necessary. Plus, we're also going to be talking about other airlines that offer their own version of a companion pass. And then we're going to discuss, does Southwest really have the best companion pass? We didn't even talk about Berlin. No. <laughs> okay, tell us where you are, Nicole. <laughs> where are you this week, Nicole? I'm in Berlin, Germany. I'm about to run the Berlin Marathon, and I'm staying at the Linder Hotel. That doesn't have pretty good Wi-Fi. But how many points was it? Oh my God, I think it was like 6,000 points. It was a Category 1 when I booked it, and now it's up to a Category 2. But I think it needs to go back down to a Category 1. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had it right the first time. <laughs> this is the first time I felt like Serena. I walked and I was like, I should have spent more points. <laughs> what are your other options in Berlin? The Grand Hyatt Berlin. That was almost three times as many points. It's okay. I'm going to stay here. But a lounge. That probably has a lounge too. But it's just me. The family's not here. So it's fine. I'm fine. <laughs> No, you're not fine. You need a carb load in a lounge. Oh, you want to see my carb load? Where is it? <laughs> this is my current carb load, okay? No lounge. Go to the supermarket. That's yeah. And peanut butter. Brot. No, it's just white bread. It's fine. <laughs> Anything Europe is good. But yes, I've been to Berlin before. I did stay at the Grand Hyatt Berlin. So I have this plan. They have an amazing spa with a cold plunge. And I plan to sneak into the hotel, go to the spa and be like, oh my God, my key's not working. <laughs> Do you mind letting me in? You know, in my marathon attire, of course they're going to let me in. I'll report back. I'll let you know how it goes. Good luck to you, Nicole. We'll be rooting for you. From the sidelines way out here. Can we roll in some pictures of you in your run right now so we can show everyone that you actually did it? 
I will I will get you some B-roll at the finish line. Yes, with the medal and all. Miguel, didn't you want to run a marathon? They give beers at this marathon. Oh. Uh, there's one in France that they give you wine. There's wine stations throughout the marathon. I don't think I'd finish it. Wow. But. We have a marathon yeah, yeah. in San Francisco where hunky firefighters hand out Tiffany jewelry. What? <laughs> yes. It's the Nike, right. Nike Women's Marathon. It might be a half, send, Nicole. I'm not sure. Send me the link, Serena. <laughs> <laughs> I will. We know you like cute people. Good luck, Nicole. Thank you very much. So let's get started with Miguel because the most important angle out of all of this is the timing. And this is the perfect season of the year to get started, isn't it? It is because with the proper strategy, your timing of earning the Companion Pass could mean that you have this for up to two years. The Southwest Companion Pass is like getting a two for one for all your flights. And it doesn't matter whether they're cash flights or you paid using points, you can buy one, get one free. You do have to pay taxes on it. But for most domestic U.S. flights, that's only about $5.60. The Southwest Companion Pass is valid for the rest of the year in which you earn it, plus the entire following year. So good timing of earning the Companion Pass is like getting two for one flights for up to two years if you time it correctly. You can earn qualifying points from flights, purchases using the Southwest credit cards, shopping via the Southwest portal, the Southwest dining program. And the best thing is that points from credit card welcome offers also count towards the points that you need to earn this. You can change the name of the Companion three times per calendar year. And I believe you can now do this online. Previously, you had to call in to make the change. Now, there are two main ways to earn the companion pass. That's either flying or earning credit card points. Three of us have earned the companion pass. One of us probably doesn't fly Southwest a whole lot. So if you've earned the companion pass before, raise your hand. Surprise, surprise, Mitch <laughs> has not. <laughs> yeah, but to earn the companion pass through flying, you need to fly 100 one-way flights per calendar year. That's like a round trip weekly. There are people that travel that much, but if you're not one of those people that travels that often, there is other ways to earn the companion pass. Let's go into how to earn this. So let's break it down step by step. How can you earn the Southwest Airlines companion pass? The first way is by flying 100 one-way flights in a calendar year. Now, unless you travel a lot, this this might not be the easiest option for everyone. The second way and probably the most popular choice with our viewers and listeners is by earning 135,000 rapid rewards points in a calendar year. This includes points earned through flying, but also earned through credit card bonuses, shopping portals, and even some promotions. Points earned on the credit card become available for the companion pass qualification once they post on your billing statement. The companion pass is good for the remainder of the calendar year in which you earn it along with the following calendar year. That means that if you time it correctly, and earn the companion pass in January or February, you can have it for almost two years. The ideal strategy is for you to apply for your first card in late in the calendar year, like in November or December, and time it to where you meet the minimum spending requirement in the first couple months of the following calendar year. Then apply for the second card immediately after to earn the companion pass as quickly as possible early in the next calendar year. That way you have it for the rest of that year plus the entire following calendar year. Southwest Airlines offers a few different credit cards. There are three personal cards cards and two different business cards. The welcome offers on these cards can range anywhere from between 50,000 up to 85,000 points after meeting the minimum spending requirement. A quick strategy is to get two Southwest cards, one personal and one business, or two business cards. That way you can combine the sign-up bonuses and earn the 135,000 points. These three personal cards typically have the same welcome offer, which is at least 50,000 points. Sometimes they do have an elevated offer. A few weeks ago, it went up to 85,000 points. So which of these cards have you all had? I've had the Southwest Plus card before. That's the $69 annual fee card. Why? Because it's the cheapest one. <laughs> and I needed <laughs> points at the time. <laughs> but the funny story is why I don't have that card anymore. I asked my husband to cancel the card, but first asked for a retention offer. I asked him, ask the rep for them to waive the fee on the card. And the fee was $69. They said... We'll give you a $69 statement credit. And he said, can you waive the fee? And they said, I'm sorry, I can't do that. And he goes, okay, I'll cancel it. Oh my gosh. Oh. Like it's the same thing. But I wasn't yeah. there to tell him that the fee was $69. I mean, he could have thought that maybe it was much more than that. Uh, from now on, always be with P2 when they're doing these calls. He didn't understand the assignment. He did not. <laughs> did not. <laughs> but a great learning lesson for me too. So how did you earn the companion pass? Did you get two cards or 
another way? I did it the old fashioned way with a business card and a consumer card. I have not had any of the personal cards. I have to keep those 524 slots open. You know, I got to bank on those Hyatt points. So my route is I took two business cards and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Mitch, so is there a reason why you don't want to earn the companion pass? You know, I feel like you and your player two could benefit from buy one, get one free flights on Southwest, no? <laughs> is it not high enough on the hog for you? Absolutely not. Oh, that Bowen's not going for me. There's like really <laughs> nowhere I want to go on Southwest. So it's, there's really no need for us to fly on Southwest because all we ever want to do is just go international. So domestically, yeah. I mean, they fly to Jamaica, they fly to Cuba, Mexico, all of these places. And they are partnering up with Iceland Air. <laughs> so that's pretty international. I saw that. That was actually pretty interesting that the fact that they're going to do that, because when you think about this, right, they've never had partners before and they're going to be starting to do all nighter flights as well. Red eye flights. So there's some big changes that coming to Southwest. Assigned seatings coming next yeah, year. Yeah, Crazy. They're moving up into the 21st century. I actually earned the companion pass with one card back in 2020. So back in 2020, there was elevated offer and the offer was 100,000 points. The requirement for to earn the companion pass was either 120,000, maybe 125,000 points. So I got 100 just with a welcome offer. And the rest of it I did through spend on the card as well as the Southwest shopping portal. So I signed up for a few meal kits and say a meal kit that I paid maybe $50 for, I would get you know, four or 5,000 rapid rewards point. And now that counted towards a companion pass. So I got the companion pass with one card. I don't know if you can really do that anymore unless you start ordering meal kits, wine subscriptions and dog food, right, Nicole? <laughs> That's the way to go. But, you know, recently one of the business cards had a very high offer where you could have earned the companion pass with just one card too. And we did talk about that in our newsletter. So remember to subscribe to our newsletter if you haven't already. Miguel, where's the hand? Scan the hand and sign up for our newsletter and you'll get uh, all the latest news in everything travel every Friday. But the one card that I have was the Southwest Priority card. And I think, honestly, that's the only one that makes sense as a keeper card to keep year after year. So let's go over these card options that you have with Southwest. On the consumer side or personal side, there's three Southwest Rapid Rewards cards. You have the Southwest Rapid Rewards Plus, the Southwest Rapid Rewards Premier, and the Southwest Rapid Rewards Priority. The Plus has a $69 annual fee. The Premier has a $99 annual fee fee and the priority has a $149 annual fee. This is the one that my player two has. And the only one I think is a keeper card. Now, some benefits offered by all three personal cards is that they all typically have the same welcome offer ranging from 50 to 85,000 points. They all come with a 10,000 point companion pass qualifying points boost, which means you would only need to earn 125,000 points for the companion pass instead of the standard 135,000 points. They all earn two points per dollar on transit, commuting, ride share, internet, cable, phone, streaming, Southwest hotel, and car rental partners. They earn 25% back on in-flight purchases, and they all earn one point per dollar on non-category spending. Now, some of the difference that they have, the Southwest Raptor Rewards Plus card will get you two early bird check-ins every year. Early bird check-in means that Southwest will check you into your flight 36 hours prior to your departure. And this is important because you'll get a better boarding sequence to choose your seat. And it comes with 3,000 rapid rewards points, which are valued at about $45. The Southwest Premier card also has two early bird check-ins, no foreign transaction fees, and that one earns 6,000 rapid rewards points every year. And these are valued at about $90. And now the Southwest Rapid Rewards Priority card, this one comes comes with four upgraded boardings per year. This means that if you show up to the gate and you want to upgrade to A1 through A15 boarding, you could pay the fee for that and you'll get a statement credit for that amount up to four times per calendar year. It also comes with a $75 Southwest credit per year and 7,500 rapid rewards every year that are valued at about $112. As you can see, getting the anniversary points every year helps you offset the annual fee. The value of points you get with a plus card means you really come out of pocket about $24 per year, which isn't too bad, but it's not worth it unless to use a two early bird check-ins. The value of the points that you get with a premier card makes it a little bit better with you coming out of pocket no more than $9 per year because you're paying 
$49 for the annual fee and getting about $90 worth of points back. However, the priority card includes a $75 annual statement credit. This statement credit is automatic. So the first $75 per year that you spend on Southwest with a priority card will get reimbursed as statement credit. When you pair that with the $112 worth of points that you get every anniversary, you have a net positive value. The value that you give with the points and the statement credit is about $187. $75 credit plus $112 worth of points on a card with an annual fee of $149. It's like Southwest is paying you $38 per year to keep this card open. Of course, that's assuming that you use the $75 credit. But if you're absolutely not flying Southwest Airlines, you can always buy a $75 gift card directly from Southwest, not from Costco, and you'll get reimbursed the statement credit of $75. Now, the gift cards nor the points, they don't expire. So you can use them whenever you're ready to fly Southwest. Right, Mitch? <laughs> gift card. You're speaking my language. So two things I really like about these cards is the upgraded boarding and the early bird check-in credits. Those are really nice because the thing I hate the most about Southwest is being online or on your phone 24 hours in advance trying to check in and getting a good boarding. Mitch said in the beginning of the show that I get A boarding all the time. I do not. Sometimes I get B. <laughs> High C maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not fun. I mean, it's okay if I'm traveling by myself, but if I'm with, you know, the family, that's not a boarding you want. That's the please remain seated <laughs> until we call your boarding group. <laughs> right. that's Don't right. line up yet. <laughs> it's not fun, but somehow I love the thrill of the hunt. Maybe it's my spirit mindedness, but I'm set up like, like a poor computer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Nyla, you got to check in. James, get your computer. You got to check in. And I don't even bother with the husband. He's like, huh? <laughs> Brother, huh? He's like, okay, we got three. We'll save you the seat. <laughs> Usually my son and I, we, I think because we're companions on the same path. So normally his boarding group follows my boarding group. And I'll go in and I would save the seat for, you know, the, the two stragglers. But once we got on a Southwest flight and I wanted to save the middle seat and my son didn't want to sit there. So a gentleman sat beside me. He was in the aisle seat. I was at the window. And I said to him, hey, we're going to stage an argument so that no one sits in the middle seat. He was like, <laughs> I'm down. He immediately says, what are you talking about? You know what you got into when you married a white guy. <laughs> what? <laughs> wow. Oh my God. And then he says, so what? I put on a few pounds. This is just extra loving. <laughs> Needless to say, no one sat in that middle seat. That's a good strategy. Sounds like the perfect seatmate. He understood my freak. That's what I say. <laughs> he understood the assignment, Miguel. Understand that this can be challenging for people and people just want to know where to sit, what time to be there what boarding group they're in and not have to worry about it. I guess Southwest answered and now they're going to assign seating next year. I miss talking to strangers about being married to them. <laughs> so what's going to happen is you're going to end up paying more for having that assigned seat when you book. How do you guys feel about that? I'm good paying, I guess. And I'm not. I don't like the open seating. I'll sit in the back by the toilets. It's fine. It's interesting to hear all of your guys' opinions and thoughts about this because that's kind of what this Elliott group is pushing for. They want them to be a little more refined, a little bit more higher end than these low budget carriers like Spirit. And it's interesting to hear this because Southwest, that's been like who they are for all these years of open seating, free bags, and they're really pushing to change all this stuff. Mitch, can you explain to us what this Elliott group is for those of us who don't know? Okay, I'm going to try. So it's this group that is really pushing hard for Southwest to make these changes. Like they even want the CEO gone from the airline because they want to push them to become this different brand than everything that they have been. And this is really hard for them, especially for Southwest, because if you remember, they also merged with AirTran as well. And there's the recent news that they're really going to be downsizing the Atlanta base as well. And Southwest have made all those promises during that merger to kind of keep it all there for Atlanta. And there's a lot of changes are coming for Southwest. So kind of everything that you know about Southwest, a lot of that's going to be changing. It's funny that they're going to be adding this captive pricing where, you know, you pay for everything that you need because Southwest, unlike Spirit, doesn't have the most affordable prices. Their airfares are not very Spirit-like. So to be paying two times as much and then I have to pay for a seat, we'll have to wait and see how they fare. People keep calling Southwest a low-cost carrier, but they don't charge low-cost. That's true. <laughs> they don't. Especially in 
our little airport oakland where southwest dominates the fares are actually pretty high sometimes it's cheaper for me to fly out of sfo instead of oakland because there's more competition in sfo well that's what we're here to talk about southwest companion pass so that you can get two for those high prices let's just hope this elliott group doesn't do anything to the companion pass oh god i'm starting to get hot <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, just to recap again, Nicole, do you have Companion Pass right now? I do have Companion Pass right now. And you, Miguel? No, I had it for about a year and a half. So I ended it in 2020. <laughs> 2020. And then he met Mitch and then now he's <laughs> high on the hog. So 2020, the remainder of 2020 and then all of 2021. Don't ask me how many times I've used it because I probably used it like three times. Wow. Good lesson. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, I hope Southwest doesn't come up with this new refresh because I love earning the companion pass with the business cards. I currently have the Southwest companion pass and I earned it through a slightly different method. We actually have two companion passes passes in our house and we use the business card method. We have three business cards that gave us two Southwest companion passes. The typical way to earn the Southwest companion pass is to get one personal card and one business card. Since it's four of us, I wanted to get two companion passes and you know, I got to keep those 524 slots open. So I got the performance card and at the time the welcome offer was 80,000 points. I got it, I want to say sometime in October or uh, early November. Then I referred my my husband to the performance card and the referral bonus at the time was 25,000. So we're at 80 plus 25, we're at 105,000. About 30 days later, I sent him another referral for the other business card. So that gave me another 25,000. So we're at 130,000 points, companion pass secured on my end. Then with his two cards, the second card, the welcome offer was only 60,000, but plus 80, that would have given us a total of 140,000 points. So with one business card on my end, two referrals to him to get two business cards, we were able to get two Southwest companion pass. So if you are a Southwest credit card holder, they automatically give you a 10,000 point boost. So technically you only need to earn 125,000 points and the boost will bump you to the next level. The great thing about using two business cards for the Southwest Companion Pass is that you don't have to use a 524 slot. As we spoke about in previous episodes, the 524 rule says that Chase will not approve you for any new cards if you have applied for five or more cards in the last 24 months. I really like the higher annual fee business cards because it does give you unlimited Wi-Fi on any device you have. You also get four priority boarding fee waived, but the higher annual fee cards, you do get early boarding passes and you also get TSA pre-check, which you can use to apply for TSA or global entry. I highly recommend applying for global entry since it includes TSA pre-check. Serena, which one of the business cards did you have? Knowing me, you would think I would get the cheaper one, but I didn't this time because of the bonus. So I did get the performance card. The annual fee for the Southwest business cards are $99 and $199 dollars respectively. Make your decision based on that. But again, I highly recommend the higher annual fee card. Nicole, one of my hesitations with the business cards, at least in the beginning, was that I didn't have a business and it was further down the line that I realized that I did have a business. A business in the bank size is really any activity that generates income and it doesn't have to be your full time income. It could be what we call a side hustle. It could be you walk the dog, you resell things on Craigslist, on Facebook Marketplace, on Etsy, you drive for Uber or DoorDash. You have a photography business, you you have rental properties, it could be anything. So I want to know what are you guys' business? Because I know we all have business cards. So what businesses do we all have here? Well, my husband has a photography business. So does my wife. <laughs> you know, honestly, he did get paid for photography once. So mm -hmm. you know, it's not a lot. I've seen their portfolios. They're beautiful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Great. And you've seen it. the B roll, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You know, when you apply for a business card on Chase, one of the options is video production. That would fit Parker perfectly. I used to have an officiant business. I did one wedding. And so that counts. And I also have a pet sitting business. Did this wedding involve Barbies? 
Real people, actually. I want to go back to this officiating thing because this is the more you know. I've never knew this about you, Serena. I didn't know right, you could do right. weddings, too. It's a, it's a great side hustle. I don't know if I could still yeah. do it. It was like an online thing. But, you know, I signed a marriage certificate. It's filed in San Francisco. Wow. I hope it's real. Oh, wow. Judge Serena. I've got this vision now of, like, you know, the people out there that are watching. Maybe you could do a wedding for their P1 and P2. How cool would that be? Oh, very cool. I would totally do that. Let's do it at, you know, a nice hotel, please. Oh, we could do it at the meetup. Oh, the we could do it at the meetup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But OK, so see, here's an example. I officiated one wedding and the banks were OK with that being a business. I even had to do that a recon call for that, too. Another thing about opening business cards is that you don't have to have a current business. You can have the intention of starting a business. So if you plan to start a business, getting a business credit card is one of the steps that you could take before starting that business. So maybe you're intending to open a business and, you know, you can start with one of these Southwest cards to earn your companion pass. I intended to marry more people after that. Yeah, I intend to start a dog food selling business. Wait, so Nicole, do you really have a dog food selling business? I mean, might as well. I, I buy them for the That's AA right. miles. I can That's sell right. them to somebody. That's I mean, it's right. a win-win. It is a win-win. Wow. Get points for buying. Get cards for selling. Wait a minute. Did everyone reveal their business? No, not uh, Mitch. Miguel, you too. I, we know your wife's business, but we don't know your business. I'm sorry, Serena, but that's my business. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, I have a business in uh, creating content. I've used that. And I've also had a landscaping business, construction. I did real estate as well. Really? Yeah. So I flipped a house before and then I had a rental property. So I've used the real estate category for some business cards. We're learning so much about our co-host tonight. I know. This is fun. <laughs> How about you, Mitch? Well, I've always kind of said I've had a video production company which I kind of do. You do. Kind of. Yes, yes, a little too. bit. <laughs> yeah. I do a lot of video work. That and then, you know, for my husband, Porrit, we just say he has a tennis coaching business. You know, he travels with these tennis players and it's, it's all a side hustle, right? All these companies, these businesses that we all have, they're all side hustles. I also signed up for DoorDash because the American Airlines shopping portal was giving you a thousand miles and loyalty points for you to make your first DoorDash delivery. So I did Don't a DoorDash you ever delivery. Say my dog food selling business. Wow. <laughs> DoorDash and dog food. I think we could do a whole episode on that and people would love that. Yeah, absolutely. So we talked about our strategy. Serena got one personal, one business card. Nicole got three business cards and referrals to do two companion passes. And then I used one credit card and the shopping portal to earn the companion pass. So let's go over some different strategies. Serena's strategy was to get one business card and one personal card. And depending on the welcome offers at the time that you apply for these cards, Cards, that may be all you need to earn the 125,000 rapid reward points. You could also get two business cards like Nicole did, and that should be enough for you to earn the companion pass as well. Or you could do one card and have a few referrals out that earn you 20 to 25,000 points per referral to get to the 125,000 rapid rewards points. If you only want to get one card, there are other ways to earn those points. Maybe you don't have friends and family that you can refer to the Southwest card, but there's other ways like the shopping portal, the dining portal, portal, or you could book hotel stays, rental cars through Southwest partners because every point counts. Now, sometimes there's some pretty good offers on the Southwest shopping portal, like there's currently a Motley full offer that'll give you 4,700 rapid rewards points for subscribing to this newsletter. And it's only about $99. So for $99, you can get 4,700 points that counts towards your companion pass. I think it's a pretty good deal. This reminds me of Nicole getting Motley Fool for her AA miles and dumping it in the trash. Yeah, do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go into the timing. When I earned the companion pass, well, my player too, we earned it halfway through the year of 2020. So we had it for the rest of that year and the entire following calendar year 2021. So when you earn the companion pass matters, because if you earn it, say in November, December, you're only going to have it for those two months and then the, the next year. But if you earn it early in the year, maybe like February, you have it for the rest of that year and the entire following calendar year. So it means you could get it for almost up to two years if you time it correctly. Can I add a bit of realness to the time? When you go online, when you go to YouTube, when you go to Instagram, everyone's like, you, you want to earn it January because, you know, you're going to get two years. So that's stuck in my head. I'm like, okay, we have to do this and we have to get it by January. But honestly, with school, I didn't use it until almost April, May. 
So while there is a time insensitivity, I don't want people to feel pressured. You still have to plan out when you're going to use these trips, right? So maybe you want to use it for a ski trip in January, then that's perfect. Be very mindful of the time. But let's say you're not going to get time off until April, May, then okay. Then you can wait till January to apply for the cards, earn it in three months, and then earn the companion pass by April or May. I just want to take the pressure off because I remember feeling like, oh my God, I need to do this absolutely right now. Like I said, I think I could probably go back and look it up, but I probably used the actual companion pass maybe like three for three flights. For me, I don't think it was worth it because, you know, it's just not how we fly. We don't really use Southwest a whole lot. It didn't really pay off for us. How many flights would you say you used it for, Nicole? six maybe for all four of us. I do think I got my money's worth out of the companion pass. Now I did find that sometimes I would have preferred to take an American Airlines flight over Southwest, but because I had the pass, I used it. So if you want to earn the companion pass early in the year to maximize the quantity of time that you have it for, you should get the card towards the end of the year. For example, if you get a new card sometime in November, December, 2024, you'll have three months to meet the spending requirement. You do not want to meet the spending requirement before January 2025. The strategy is to apply for the card November or December, but once you're a few hundred dollars away from meeting the minimum spending requirement, stop using it and then finish it off until after January 1st, the billing statement will close and then that welcome offer will hit your account. Other things to consider for this Southwest Companion Pass is that the 524 rule does apply to these cards. That means that if you've opened five or more cards in the past 24 months, Chase will likely not approve your application for these cards. You also cannot get the welcome offer for any of these cards if you've received the bonus for that card in the past 24 months. If you currently hold a personal Southwest card, you cannot get another one because you can only hold one at a time. So if you wanted to get a new welcome offer on one of these cards, you would first have to close that card, wait a bit, and then apply for the card again. Now, there is no restriction for the business card. You can have one or both of these cards at the same time, but for the personal cards, you can only have one at a time. The Southwest Companion Pass, it's so popular, but is it worth it? What do you guys think? It depends. It's not worth it for Mitch. I don't think it was worth it for me because I only used it about three times, but it can be worth it if you use Southwest a lot or if you have a lot of Southwest points. Let's say that somebody does apply for two of these cards to earn the 125,000 points. Now, if you use those 125,000 points with your companion pass, that's the equivalent of you know, 250,000 points, but you're also taking a companion with you. So, I mean, this is almost, you know, almost $4,000 welcome offer by using the welcome points on two cards and a companion pass at the same time. So when I first started in points and miles and I heard about the Southwest companion pass, I'm like, oh my God, I'm definitely going to get that because I'm going to be going to Jamaica all the time. (laughs) So what a lot of people don't know is that Southwest actually flies internationally, Mitch. There might not be a first class seat yet, but they do fly to several destinations outside of the US. I imagine going to Jamaica like three or four times. Well, we only went once, but we did use a Southwest companion pass a lot, especially for positions positioning flights. People might want to consider, are there Southwest flights from your airport? Does your destination require a long layover or a connection? Some Southwest flights require two connections. So you might want to consider that and see if it makes sense to you. They have an interactive map, which is very helpful to see where Southwest flies from your airport directly. So I think that could be used in the decision-making process. So let's talk about some of the destinations that Southwest does fly to, and maybe Mitch will change his tune. He won't. I'll tell you right now. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So they fly all over the U.S., Mexico, in Central America, they fly to Belize in Costa Rica. And in the Caribbean, they fly to Aruba, Grand Cayman, Jamaica, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Turks and Caicos, and the Bahamas. And Cuba, too. So there's a lot of options for those of you who want to go to Mexico or the Caribbean or Central America. It seems like a lot of these routes are like leisure routes. You know, it seems like a lot of resort towns like Mexico. It's pretty much to Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, but soon to be, I guess, Iceland, right? I don't know when that'll happen, but that new partner they have, Iceland Air. Yeah, it's funny how you mention Iceland Air because Iceland Air is famous for not having lie flat business class seats. So it's That's not right. high on the hog enough for Mitch. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> it's a perfect match. It's a perfect <laughs> match, right? <laughs> but it's also not that long of a flight, you know, for most yeah. of the places that fly in the U.S. is maybe a six, maybe seven hour flight. So their Saga class, which is their 
business class. It's really like premium economy. I don't think it's too bad for a six hour flight, especially if that is your destination. If you're going to Iceland. My advice on the Southwest Companion Pass is, you know, I think it's like everything else that we talk about in points and miles. You got to see if it does make sense for you. Now, if you're one of those people that like love Hawaii, then yeah, you could really do well with the Southwest Companion Pass because they go to all the islands and then don't forget they have all those inner island flights as well. So if you're like really into Hawaii and you want to take like a great vacation, you can go to one destination like Oahu and then you could do the little hoppers use that companion pass to kind of go all over Hawaii so don't forget about that as well if you're a big Hawaii fan Southwest could be your airline yeah a lot of times the Southwest inter-island flights are cheaper than Hawaiian Airlines itself. So Southwest is a great option. I think for myself, I'm one of those people who needs to evaluate it year after year. When my kids were little, we were doing mostly domestic travel and flying a lot of Southwest. So the companion pass made sense for us. If I look at this year, for example, guess how many times my family flew Southwest? Zero. Zero. (laughs) Zero. We might fly it in December though. If I might fly it once, it's not worth it for me to get the companion pass. Now, I did fly Southwest this year, but it was solo. So the companion pass, of course, doesn't make sense for me if I'm flying Southwest by myself. But I think it's a great option for families who fly domestically a lot. If you have a Southwest airport close to you, if you want to go to these destinations that we talked about, and also if you travel a lot for sports, I think it makes a lot of sense. My daughter is getting into traveling a lot more for soccer. I've had to book multiple Southwest flights for her. It makes sense for us to get the companion pass now if we're going to be traveling with her to these tournaments. Serena, welcome to the world of travel soccer. You have (laughs) no idea what you signed up for. But I think we're the best people to be in it because when I think about how much other parents are paying for flights and hotels, it can be very daunting. I have this conversation with the other parents and I'm actually putting in our soccer chat. Oh, this Southwest flight has lowered now. You can reprice your ticket. And they're like, what? I didn't know you could do that. And then I tell them how about how I use points. And they're like, wow, because our round trip flight for each kid is $500. And it hurts if you have to pay that. This is just from San Jose to San Diego. Mm. Because these these clubs, they announce their flights last minute. There's no more want to get away fares. So you're subject to the higher fares that are available. When you're bound by the club and the flights that they choose, everybody else needs to fly to that destination too. Then you're stuck and you have to get that one flight. Points really help in this scenario. Hold on, let me interrupt you real quick uh, because you, you were talking about the type of fares. And I was in Chicago for Chicago seminars last week and I heard something from someone that was interesting. So Southwest Airlines now offers what they call one to get away plus fares, which is an extra 20 to $30 over the lowest rate. This fare allows you to change your flight to the same destination the day of your flight to any other flight. Now, what this person does, who told me this tip, is they book the cheapest flight for that day, but it's the one to get away plus. Then they'll go and book a flight for a friend or family member on the flight that they actually want using points. That way they reserve a slot on that flight. And then right before he's going to change it, he'll cancel that flight for his friend or family member. So that seat will be open and he can change his flight to the flight he actually wanted. That's a good tip. And I think that works really well when you're solo too. Yeah, of course. Probably more difficult if you're flying with a family. Cause you yeah, need cause then you'd have, to, <laughs> you'd have to book <laughs> <laughs> Double the points. four or five or six At least. flights. Yeah. yeah. Serena, you mentioned this great tip about Southwest that if the price goes down, you can call or rebook online and get the difference in fare. So I know with the Southwest companion pass, a lot of people, what they do is they take their companion off to reprice the flight and then put their companion companion back on. Because I'm a nervous Nelly, I'm like, oh my God, if I take them off, someone's going to buy the seat. We're not going to have a seat. So what I do is I know people don't like to talk to humans, but if you have a flight booked with your companion and the price goes down, you don't have to cancel it. You can call Southwest, give them your confirmation number, and they can adjust it for you and either give you back the cash or the points difference in the price. It doesn't take long. It takes like five, 10 minutes. And I think it's much easier to call them than to cancel and rebook and add your companion and that sort of thing. But then you have to talk to a person. (laughs) 
<laughs> yes. Yes. We are, still have to talk to a person. I'm yeah. that old. That's how it is. You know, that brings up an important point, too, because you can only add a companion if there's a seat available on the plane. And we've heard from many people how if this flight is sold out, you cannot add your companion. Nicole, you have a story? That was me. That was our Jamaica flight. I was like, OK, we're going to Jamaica. No big deal. James and I. <laughs> Booked. Big James, booked. And I tried to add the companion. I got an error message. I'm like, what is this? Try it again. Error message. I called and the lady was like, there's no more seats. I was like, what? So they had to fly spirit. That can happen. Speaking of not talking to humans, I think that it's cool that you can now change your companion online because the companion pass that I had a few years ago was under my wife's name. So she had to call. And if I don't like talking to humans, she definitely doesn't like talking to humans. So I had to write a script for her and said, this is what you're going to tell them. You want to switch your companion from this person to this person. But apparently you can do that online now. So you can change your companion three times per calendar year. And so if you're a planner like I am and you've booked out your entire your year on Southwest. We're in October. Let's say I have a flight book for me with my companion attached to it. I won't be able to change my companion unless I cancel that flight. So for me, I have never changed a companion because we always have something going on. If you don't have your trips booked out, then you can change it up to three times for the year. So today you can take your mom, next week you can take your dad, or maybe you have that friend that's really nice to you and you wanna treat them to a special trip, you can put them on. Okay, so we've had some really good discussion about Southwest and their program. So we wanna know from you, what do you think about this companion pass? Is it worth it to you? If so, tell us why. If not, we wanna hear that too. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you think about the Southwest companion pass. And one way you can support our show is to think about using our credit card links when you're ready to open a new card. You can check out our links on our website at letsgettothepoints.com. It costs you nothing to use our credit card links, but we get a small commission and it helps us continue to produce free content like these videos for you. Fabulous free content, Serena. One thing I want people to be conscious of is sometimes Southwest will offer a promotional companion pack. Pass. And this would have been one of my lessons. Southwest is offering a promotional pass a few months ago. All you needed to do was take a round trip flight or two one way flights and you would get a promotional companion pass for three extra months. Well, for me, it would have been three extra months. For anyone else, it would have been maybe like a trial for three months. And what I realized is Nyla and James will be going on a soccer trip and they would have counted for it because it was in that time frame and they would have gotten an additional three months on their companion pass. But I snoozed, so I lost. Check out our newsletter because we put all these kinds of promotion in there. And if you want to be in the know and not lose out like I did, you definitely want to scan the hand <laughs> to sign up for a newsletter that comes out every Friday. Scan the hand. So we hear so much about the Southwest Companion Pass. But you know what? There are other airlines that also have their own version of a Companion Pass. We'll talk about those here. And then we're going to talk about whether Southwest Companion Pass is the best one out of all of them. American Airlines has a version of the Companion Certificate. And you can earn one each anniversary year if you have the Advantage Aviator Business Card. But you have to spend $30 thousand dollars on this card and keep it open 45 days after the anniversary date in order to get this companion pass. The American Airlines companion certificate is for one guest and it costs $99 plus taxes and fees. You can also earn an American Airlines companion certificate if you hold the Aviator Red or the Aviator Silver card. The silver card comes with two guest passes. And with each of these cards, you have to spend $20,000 on the card and keep it open for 45 days after the anniversary date. And these companion certificates are only good in economy in the contiguous 48 states. Delta Airlines also has a companion certificate if you hold several versions of their platinum card and their reserve cards. And you only get the certificate after the second year after renewing your 
your cards. British Airways has a travel together ticket. You have to spend $30,000 a calendar year on the British Airways Visa Signature Card, or you can use it for 50% off an award ticket. But keep in mind, British Airways passes on high fuel surcharges. Aer Lingus and Iberia both have a Visa Signature Card, and you get a companion certificate when you spend $30,000 in a calendar year on either card. But with Iberia, you get a $1,000 voucher to use toward a ticket on the same flight. Lufthansa Miles and More, their World Elite MasterCard also has a companion ticket and you get that after a first purchase. And then there's Hawaiian Airlines. This isn't really a companion pass, but it's more of a discount for a companion where you get 50% off or a $100 discount depending on the card that you have. And then there's Spirit Airlines, Nicole. The free Spirit Travel More World Elite MasterCard gives you a companion flight voucher. And what this is, is it's a discount voucher. You get $100 off after you spend $1,000 in 90 days. So what is that, like five free flights, Nicole? It depends on how you use it. $20. $20. <laughs> <laughs> You also get one of these every anniversary after spending $5,000 per year. Nicole, would you ever spend $5,000 a year on the Spirit card? Absolutely not. Should get another ink card. That's right. Absolutely. You, you know me. <laughs> and then last but not least, this is probably the second most popular companion pass. It's the Alaska Airlines famous companion pass. And this is good for one round trip coach companion fare. You have to pay $99 plus the taxes and fees. And sometimes you get this as a bonus on the Visa Signature Credit Card when you spend $3,000 in 90 days. But you also get one when you spend $6,000 in the first year of having the card unless you were grandfathered in previously. The same goes with the Alaska Airlines business card. If you spend $3,000 in 90 days, you'll get a $99 companion fare, and then you have to pay the taxes and fees in addition to that. Do you have some insight about this Alaska famous companion pass? Yeah, Serena. So here's the cool thing about the Alaska companion pass. These tickets that are booked with the Alaska companion fare, they're actually upgradable both for the primary passenger and the companion as well. So this includes using the complimentary elite upgrades if you've got status, the gold guest upgrades, and the instant upgrade fares also qualify as well. So it's a good way to get upgraded from the back to the front with this companion pass on Alaska. Sounds like right up your alley. So the other thing is, is the companion fare, it's valid for round trip, like you had talked about, one way, multi-city. And that's the cool part is that you can use this for different ways, however you want to use it. And the Alaska Companion Fair, though, it isn't valid for award travel or for travel that includes segments on any other airlines other than Alaska or Horizon. But here's the cool part. Now that they have merged with Hawaiian, I have a feeling the way that they're moving, putting these programs together, something very quickly is going to happen with this Alaska Companion Pass to where it's going to be able to be used on Hawaiian pretty quickly. I just get this feeling. That's interesting because I have like two or three companion passes with Alaska and I have never used them. Same. Yeah. I have a feeling all of us have had access to these passes, but has anybody used them? I haven't. My mom used it once, but I haven't used mine. Mitch, have you used yours? Yeah, we don't use the companion pass for the Alaska cards. We just get them for the sign up bonus. That's pretty much the only reason we get the Alaska card because those miles are so valuable because they're part of one world and we like Starlux. We like Japan Airlines. That's what we do with our Alaska miles and the credit card. And that's same. the same thing we're doing with the Hawaiian cards now that you can transfer miles. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Now that you can transfer miles between Hawaiian and Alaska, I picked mm -hmm. up a couple Hawaiian cards. I don't know. Maybe I'll pick up a couple more because... <laughs> The last miles are valuable. Just pick them on up. Just for all grab your them off players. The and this is another thing that we mentioned in our newsletter about getting the Hawaiian cards for future Alaska miles. All I'm saying is if you have not picked up that Hawaiian card yet and you value Alaska miles, it's an easy 70,000 Hawaiian miles that you can transfer into Alaska now. So a lot of uses you can get out of those. Wait a minute. Is this an Alaska show? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll save that for next week. Yeah. I like the idea. What do you guys think? An Alaska show next week? 
Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's great to point out that all of us get Alaska cards, but we don't feel pressured to use that companion pass that comes with it. So you also shouldn't feel pressured to use it. It's okay to get it for just the welcome offer. Yeah, even the maximizer hasn't used it. Surprisingly, there are a lot of airlines out there that have their own version of a companion pass. So is Southwest the best? What do you guys think? It depends. I'm going to go with what Serena said. West Coast, Best Coast, Southwest, Best Companion Pass? <laughs> Is that a reach? <laughs> doesn't have a great rhyme, but I think it makes sense, though. <laughs> okay. I think the main difference is that all the other cards, it's for like a one-time use. And the Southwest Companion Pass is pretty much unlimited from when you earn it, the rest of that year, and the following entire next year. It's kind of like a buffet, you know, all you can fly. Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. yeah, I do think Southwest is the best one out of all of these. I mean, let us know in the comments. We've mentioned a couple of different companion paths. Would you get the Southwest companion pass? And if so, who would you take? Where would you go? And let us know if any of these other airlines offer a better companion pass for you. We want to hear. That's it for now. I want to thank all of our hosts. It's our A-lister, Serena. More like B-lister. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs> it's our early bird, Miguel. Later. And we're going to see you next week with much better Wi-Fi. Right, Nicole? Yes, you're going to see me with a nice giant medal next week. <laughs> <laughs> Great timing. All right, I'm Mitch Tana. Make sure you sign up for our email <laughs> newsletter. Just snap the QR code right now on your screen for the latest in everything going on in Points and Miles. And we're going to see you here next Friday. Thank you for watching and listening. Let's get to the points.com.